Hello, my name is Sondra Butterworth and I'm delighted to be able to give this presentation today for the Health and Care Research Wales Digital Conference. Now, as you can see, the title of the presentation is The Diagnosis and the subtitle is Stories Are Not Just for Bedtime. Now, the overall presentation aim is to provide a focus on the case study group of adults living with a diagnosis of the rare genetic condition Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or EDS. Now the participants involved in this case study um, were involved in a mixed methods PhD study and its aim was to explore the relationship between quality of life and social support. So, in essence, this presentation and the PhD study as a whole was focused on rare stories. And this is one quotation from one of the participants. And what she said at the time of the interview was, it took years to get a diagnosis. Then I found out it was genetic and my children could inherit it. So, I said at the beginning of the slides that this, this study um, was a mixed method study and it had a sequential case study design. So it was in three parts and the objective of having a mixed method study was that I would, and it would enable me to delve deeper into the narratives of the participants, but also having a mixed method, so qualitative and quantitative data can enable me to have a more robust um, approach and to the analysis. So it started with a literature review and the res results and the outcome from the literature review enable me to create the research question. Following on from that, was a survey. So I um, did an online survey uh, and the objective of that was to identify the relationship between quality of life and social support for the people who participated in that study. Um, and then finally I took a selection of, of a smaller group of people who participated in the study to take place, take part in a in-depth interview. This slide um, presents an overview of the narrative accounts from all of the participants and I've selected one of the participants, Miss Y, who was a 25-year-old single white woman who described herself as an atheist um, and she reported that her quality of life and social support were fair when she was asked on the questionnaire that she completed online. She also said that she did not feel that she had enough social support. She also felt that um, she was stigmatised because of her condition. Now, in order to um, get the overview, what I did was I took all the narrative accounts and I coded each of the accounts. And this particular coding identified for Miss Y, stigma was something that she felt was um, impacting quite significantly on her life, as was attitude of others. This slide presents a, a bigger view of the um, cross matrix analysis of all of the par eight participants. So essentially what I did was I took all of their narratives and put them together. And I used um, a qualitative analysis tool called NVivo. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but I find it very useful. Um, and what I did was I took all of the different factors. So the parent factors were psychological, physical and social factors and coded them. Then to get a, a deeper analysis, I wanted to then cross-reference any comments that the participants made, mm -hmm. um, and then could be coded as either physical or psychological, etc. And then to see if any of the comments included more than one factor. So here, for example, 
one of the participants said when she received a diagnosis it affected me massively I just went completely off the rails I just completely shut down so if you follow the arrow you can see that the physical factor of having the condition cross-referenced with her mental health state and obviously uh, there's a, a lot of data and narrative accounts that provide more detail into how she felt about having the diagnosis. But this gives you an idea of how I um, analysed and cross-referenced different factors within the accounts. Well, at the end of any um, piece of research or any study, it, it's you need to have implica implications for practice. And um, in the conclusion of my PhD study, what I've done is I've looked at real world evidence to try to put the findings of the research into context. Now, what I have done within the study was to, I, I looked at, sorry, quality of life, social support and need. And a bit like what I did with the um, analysis of the narratives, I looked at the, the three um, theoretical perspectives underlying quality of life, social support and need, and then found a convergence point. So um, what I wanted to be able to do was to apply the study into real world practice. And it, it does fit from my perspective in the uh, social prescribing practice models. And one of the key things within the study, um, particularly with um, models of need, and I've looked at Bradshaw's taxonomy of need, where you have two aspects. One is the expressed need, so expressed need of the people who need services or support, and then versus the assessed need, so the assessment of um, professionals, health or social care professionals. And in an ideal world, the expressed need and the assessed need would marry up and they would be the same or close to that. But in reality, that does not always happen. And in the uh, conclusion of my study, I'm suggesting that this particular aspect is vital for diverse and rare disease communities where one group of people are, have an expressed need, stating that this would help their needs, but they're assessed and the needs necess are not necessarily what they are saying that they do need, so they don't always match. Um, and then looking underneath the model that I've got there, I've used um, the, the World Health um, Organization's quality of life dimensions. And the, that's the quality of life measure that I feel is, is most holistic. And it's also um, culturally appropriate because it's one of the few quality of life measures that does include spiritual dimensions within it. So, um, I've then pulled that as the third section of this is the types of support that um, is found in the literature. And I've used Saracen and Saracen's model in which they say that there are different types of support. And I've used the acronym SIGHT to, to help me to remember. So companionship with support, that's a sense of belonging to a community group or a network. Information support, if somebody has a condition, providing them with the information that they need to make sure that they've understood that. Tangible support, it practical um, finance, um, practical um, support in the home, etc. And then emotional support, that's just, you know, the standard thing I think a lot of people are finding, particularly with the current um, world that we live in, that people are leading a lot of emotional support, which is given by friends, families and so on. This final slide is just a combination of all the information from the other slides put together for your reference. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Please get in touch with me if you'd like to talk more about the research or if you um, would like to share um, projects and so on. I'll be happy to chat to you. Thank you so much. Bye.